and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us. Breaking news tonight. Israel vows to continue its campaign against Hamas for as long as it takes, while a missing soldier is now declared dead. A live upstate, uh, update from Gaza. And Ebola, now in the United States for the first time, will have the latest. But first to my open. There comes a point in the life of a company when shareholders who believe the CEO is no longer capable demand resignation. Signs are that if America were a company, the shareholders, now at a tipping point, would demand a similar move. Let me put this in Janine speak. The world is going to hell in a handbasket, and Barack Obama doesn't have the leadership, the instincts, or even the interest to get America back on track. Now, why do I say this? Consider the following. 60% of Americans disapprove of the president's handling of the Israel-Hamas conflict. 57% disapprove of his handling of Ukraine, Iraq, and Afghanistan situations. And 68% of Americans disapprove of his handling of immigration and believe it to be an extremely serious problem. And even his own party, in Harry Reid's democratically controlled Senate, couldn't pass the president's border crisis bill. The House at least passed a bill, but America's CEO swore he wouldn't sign it and sarcastically chastised Congress for going on vacation. As if, Mr. President, you're a hard-working, roll-up-your-sleeves, take-no-prisoners kind of guy. Take a look. While there out on vacation, I'm going to have to make some tough dis, uh, choices to meet the challenge, with or without Congress. House Republicans, as we speak, are trying to pass the most uh, extreme and unworkable versions of a bill that they already know is going nowhere, that can't pass the Senate, and that if it were to pass the Senate, I would veto. They know it. And I won't even ask how many vacations, golf outings, fundraisers, and pool games you've had while the world turns and burns. Now, consider the immigration crisis. Mr. President, please tell me why our Border Patrol agents are not at the border, stopping the continuous influx of immigrant children, most of whom, by the way, are teens, three-quarters of those males. Other countries close their borders. Why don't we? What is it about the $17 trillion debt that you don't understand? Now, 80% of unaccompanied children come through the Rio Grande entry, yet Border Patrol is about 70 miles in. You know that, so why not put resources at that point? Or is it your intention to stop them only after they enter the United States? As an alleged constitutional scholar, you do know that once they enter the United States, they are granted, according to the United States Supreme Court interpretation, constitutional rights never intended for them in the first place. And what's that? This is a humanitarian crisis? Really? Where's the UN and its emergency relief coordinator? Why aren't they here? Why aren't they in Mexico? Why aren't they in Central America? Why? Because your plan is to bring the immigrants here. And the truth? Americans are the most generous, compassionate, and charitable people in the world. Yet you, for your own selfish reasons, virtually invite the uninvited to change the demographic of this nation. But in the end, even you were duped. Those who have sent the Trojan horse of children that you have so willingly accepted will have the last laugh. You diverted Border Patrol agents to entry points used by these so-called children, leaving other parts of the border unpatrolled. Justice has learned that drug cartels are exploiting the unguarded areas to continue their drug trafficking. Remember a few weeks back, shots fired from jet skis attributed to just those criminals at one of the less patrolled parts of the border? You, Mr. President, are not only derelict in your duty to protect us, but you are opening up this country to Mexican drug cartels determined to create a new network in the United States as you 
funnel male teens throughout the country. This week, 1,000 kids sent to a city where they can experience firsthand what it's like to live in your hometown, Chicago, the murder capital of America. And so, thanks to your refusal, or at the very least ineptitude, to enforce our laws, we now have a whole new overlay of government bureaucracy to accommodate those who break our laws, and we get to pay for it. Now, let's consider the international front. More ineptitude. Your brilliant Secretary of State negotiates for an Israeli-Hamas ceasefire with Turkey and Qatar actually believing Hamas, a terrorist organization, will keep their word. After trumpeting the 72-hour ceasefire, two Israeli soldiers were killed within 90 minutes. Tonight, we learn that a third soldier originally thought to be kidnapped was killed in battle. Brilliant. At this point, any rational person would have to ask, Whose side are you really on? You're so quick to tell Israel to stop shelling after hundreds are killed in Gaza. And while there's no question that everyone bemoans the killing of innocents, why didn't you even follow your own red line threat as over 100,000 were killed in Syria? And in Ukraine, you really scared Putin. Investigators still haven't received complete access to the crash site, and as of today, as many as 80 bodies remain on the ground. But hey, not to worry, Ebola patients are entering the United States for the first time in history. And on the economic front, the stock market almost crashed this week. Yes, it is a crying shame that Congress went on vacation in the midst of all this. But since you talk out of both sides of your mouth, Mr. President, my guess is that you'll be on vacation in Martha's Vineyard very soon. A little golf, a little pool, a few fundraisers. But while you're relaxing, how about you give some serious thought to reading some books on leadership, since that's what we're paying you to do. And that's my open. With me now, conservative